Hi, uh, sorry for the setup issues. Um, this is my talk about psychic paper. It's how to use e-ink displays and also e-paper displays to fake the front of identification badges and also discussion about the two or three e-ink systems that are pre-made from suppliers and how they have lax security and unusual sign up. Uh, my handle is Zitobibigong. I'm a frequent of the DEF CON Discord. Talk more about who I am. I have 11 years of experience in the software industry. This is a hobby project and this is not related to my employer. I've actually had to add that to my presentations because people think that they're too advanced to actually not be related to my hobby. So what does this talk about? This talk is about the application of two to three color ink displays and also a design prototype of a five color ink display that would be much more effective in red teaming and or physical red teaming and social engineering. Anecdotally, I talked with a person at DEF CON and they were able to replicate someone's badge by taking a, by looking for a high resolution picture, copy and pasting it into an image editor and then printing it out. This system while having a lower resolution could be done in real time and also it could be replaced real time too and combined with RFID knowledge that has been done in many DEF CON talks you could basically clone an entire employee ID badge or physical access badge that uses RFID and or other technologies like MIFID and so forth. So first we're going to go through three color e-ink displays. These can be found on Amazon and Alibaba. They are very easy to source. They are much durable than the research prototype I have. They are reprogrammable and they have a weird way that you have to program them. So this is the nice pictures from Amazon that they put and on the upper right side that's the real thing. A good idea to understand the difference between e-ink, e-paper and, and traditional display technologies or not really traditional but light emissive versus non-light emissive. So non-light emissive technologies require power and they require the emission of light. OLED, LCD, and so forth, by that nature, the obvious emission of light requires thermodynamically, you need a power source. On e-ink, and or e-paper, e-ink is trademarked, so e-ink TM. It's an electromechanical device. And what does that mean? Electromechanical devices are devices that literally just move uh, by an electric charge and then stop. Because they stop, they can not require a power source after programming. I talked with someone in a previous talk I gave at, a, at another conference and they told me that they had a 12-year-old e-ink or e-paper device with the image for that long and there was no image degradation. But why I call this three color is that technically there are three colors. There is white, red, and black. 
Now, the other difference between e-paper and other light emissive or such as LED and OLED is that because this is electromechanical, you technically have three colors and it's not RGB. It's white-ish, black, and red. You can see this. And also if you had a Kindle, it's pretty obvious that white is not white-ish also. You can, even in the picture, you can see what true white is and white. So that's a big thing to consider. So this is a demo. It was on Amazon about just a two color. As you can, you can see the housing too. Uh, that will be important in the five color prototype. So you could basically remake this, especially if they use only a QR code to authenticate people by just getting the data off the QR code and then using the e-ink or e-paper programmer and then scanning it. So this, um, the sum types of the suppliers are the software is made by Hippo Inc. or Hypo Inc. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, the APK must be downloaded from Hong Kong IP addresses, or you have to be there. It, there's the active version that is also a hundred dollars. The non-active version is around forty. The active version most um, has a button and a USB-C, possibly to reprogram but it's pretty obvious that they have to have some kind of battery to do that. But both need phones to connect to. The higher priced one uses an iOS device, but I'm only going to really show the Android one. So this is more an expanded on how to reprogram those three color. You need a Hong Kong IP address, use a VPN too. Um, Volvad seems to work. You must silo the APK. You still must be using a Hong Kong IP address to download the APK. Also, they have a link. Uh, you must create the login still using the VPN. It has this weird setup. You use cause email, you set up a password, and then the, and then you have pseudo two factor or two factor that's emailed to you. But then you can upload the badge. The cards have a 125 kilohertz NFC or on it. Uh, the the important part is, I believe like aluminum tape or just uh, to remove it if you want to use any other RFID technology. If so, you don't want to conf confuse the RFID or e inks uh, RFID or NFC sensor. This. The passive ones also uses NFC to reprogram. So I suggest putting it on the back or just put it in your pocket. Now I'm going to go into more of the prototype design I made. So this is the more interesting part. And it was not in the talk description, but I mean, why not? So as you can see on the right, there is a e-paper ESP32 circuit board. It then connects to the e-paper device. You can see that the fidelity is much better. The white is still off-white, but it's much more high resolution. Also, this was the also there's this bet, but also the, the purple part is the bezel. The orange part is the physical display connector. The middle part is a shim that they do where it takes one connector and adds it to another. And so, but the middle part is part of the programmer. There is also an, a, a Raspberry Pi hat. And 
in the future, if I were to redo it, I would have done it that way. This programmer is either mess is has unreliable behavior or when I've unplugged and plugged the orange part, it breaks my programming. So I have to do more research in that, but you could also do it, um, it as a one and done engagement anyways, since the person who I talked about doing the physical engagement when he printed it out, he, he said he used it for the full engagement and nobody noticed for a month. So nobody, so this is a more high fidelity nobody looks at, but you can also do active programming by like going in from one security, taking a picture about somebody else's picture with higher level clearance, reprogram and so forth. And this is the most important part and most technical part of it. I had to find a wallet that would cover the bezel. Do you see this bezel? I did find a wallet. This is on Amazon. This is not an ad for the wallet, but you can, I don't know if you can see that this well, but it covers the bezel. And number two is, your friend is also called double-sided tape. And why does, why does that matter? You want this to generally be in place so that the be bezel scene is minimized, because people might notice the purple part and also you don't want it falled out. I would also recommend to use that so it doesn't fall out either, although it's pretty tight if you don't cut anything. Um, but yeah, double-sided tape is really important. Measuring the bezels was, was, was annoying because of this is in inches. And the, the, the display prototype or the display I'm using is in metric, so millimeters. So the affected display that you have to program at 640 by 400, there are five colors in display which increases the fidelity. This is, since it's more do-it-yourself, it makes it more fragile. The RFID and NFC component is, can be separate. There are two ways that you can integrate it. One, cut the back of the display, I mean back of the wallet, um, paste an RFID dev device or anything inside, remove the RFID shielding, because this one has shielding, I couldn't find one without shielding, and put it inside. Another way would be to take a picture of the back of a wallet, make a sticker on, on sticker mule, and then use double-sided tape on the RFID device, and then put the sticker on top of that. So this is sort of a basic summary of the steps to do. You could also make your own lanyard. I actually think oh, if I to make a less prototype or more like a release version would be for me to replicate this white design and 3D print it and then add Bluetooth programming or something else. And maybe also add the um, NFC holder on the back. So the brand for the, uh, the wallet I'm using is Cavaleo. Uh, it's, it's a police style badge. Uh, I don't recommend using the other part because that's more than that's very illegal um you can see the six resolution of this e-paper device it's wave share and then the hid card 
you can either get these cards from online, you could get it by buying a Proxmark, you could get one by forgetting to return your hotel badges, depends. There are two general frequencies, 125 kilohertz and I believe four and 15 kilo, um, megahertz, but it really depends on the situation, on what you're doing, and programming is annoying. ESP32 driver board. You can use a phone for the three color. Um, the five color also has the ability to do programming online. So it's sort of weird. The ESP32 has two ways to do online programming, like through a website. One is a Bluetooth one that I couldn't get working. And two is the Wi-Fi one, and the Wi-Fi one is extremely finicky. Like I do, I look in console, and like if you do it, it it crashes. Like it says, post does not work, and you have to do it in a specific order. And if you do it in the wrong order, you could have real problems. And I would like overwrite the driver board, and this is why I don't want to use this driver board anymore. It very, and there are many upsides for the. Raspberry Pi usage. Uh, there was a DEF CON talk where they did a real time dis uh, uh, badge cloning of RFID and they used Raspberry Pis, which means that you could combine or this into that talk and then you wouldn't even need this driver board. Wave, Waveshare also has a wiki. It's okay, but there are no alternative suppliers to this. This is the best solution I've seen. 4.01 inches is really hard to find. And also, the purpose of these e ink or why they even exist are for digital signage to like, to, uh, if you go to a Kohl's, they have a lot of, or Best Buy, they have a lot of prices on the walls and they use it to automatically change it and possibly rip you off more. So this is more about the driver board. It physically attaches, it connects the EP paper and it's a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Once you do programming though, it's not needed. So it could be a one and done engagement, really considering how you how it how it is. It's very slightly inexpensive. It's a below forty dollars, but yeah. So how how I recommend is smartphone should be able to write it to the e paper using the Wi Fi, but the Wi Fi setup has to be programmed specifically as a static IP. And I thought of doing a demo like that, but it would require too much overhead and also Wi-Fi is spotty and I'd have to bring some kind of Wi-Fi divider. I also possibly, if you if you're going to do this yourself, to add a metal plate, they're not expensive to do, just to just make the wallet more rigid because the this, you can crack this quite easily by dropping it. So the aluminum would at least make it more rigid. And I believe the padding in the wallet gives you enough. The bad reprogrammer is like a pox mark. You plug in the serial port, there's a lot of tutorials to do it, to write bads, read the badge from one, and then write, and then put it, you could put it behind the prototype badge, that's more advanced thing than you're emulating, but the top three would be, and that by putting in, I mean, putting in behind the prototyping badges, you put in the programmed RFID behind it or keep it on you. It depends on how bad, good you want to make it. So, uh, any questions?
believe it's white, red, I believe it's white, red, black. Oh, it's seven. Um, yeah, you can see it here. White, blue, green, red, black, yellow, orange. It's the spinner. The, the bill of materials, if you were to redo this, would be the e-paper display is around 30 or 40. The wallet is another 30. The programmer is another 20. So around $200. It depends on how you're doing the RFID reprogramming. You can use a Poxmark. Or, on the other hand, if it the physical, if you're doing a physical one, you could just take somebody's and use the double-sided stick tape and the other sticker I alluded to. I can't hear. I can't hear what you say. Software set of what? It's an Arduino sketch that you get. It's an Arduino sketch that is given to you by WaveShare. Do not use Arduino IDE. Use the on um, use the previous. You, the Arduino IDE have had problems. Using a Mac has problems. Using a window machine was the only way I could get it to work. It has this weird, it, it, when I program it, even though it'll verify and it shows up in tools, and here's what I was alluding to, You can see how janky this is. You have to program the SSID password, static IP, gateway, subnet, DNS, to connect to Wi-Fi. What I think was cool or funny was they also programmed the whole HTML website here. That's how they get it to, that's they get, that's they how they, they get the ESP2 to work. So it's not a server, it's a client. Server.h is this website. Serving. Server.h means to connect to a server. And then it displays this and like, I don't know why there's script A, B, and C, and D. There's a Bluetooth one too. I couldn't get that one to work. I'm. So, so yeah, it, you can see there's, um, it's probably sorry to see, but it uses, it says, you have to also use the board ESP2 dev module. So that means that you have to be connected to the internet to get the module parameters or set up because Arduino does not come with that by default. And what I meant by the Arduino version, so this is 1.8.29. So Arduino forked themselves by the ID where they have an Arduino IDE and they have the Arduino um, regular system or programming system, not IDE. Uh, when I tried programming with the uh, traditional IDE, it had 
I had lots of problems to the point where I just reverted. So this is the three color dispatch being programmed. This is where there was an issue when I was programming it when this is me tapping it properly to it you can just it'll cut. So this is so you can see sort of the interface. And see, this is my face when you have only three colors. This is the logo I made that is in the tool. I plan on trying to make a tool that's integrated to the point where it will be try to do the USB programming directly hosted by uh, res or and or hosted by the Raspberry Pi hat um, to try to integrate a lot of the difficulties I had with the traditional programmers. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Thanks everybody for coming to this talk.